Hey, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. My name is Salvador Brigman, and on this channel, we talk about crowdfunding, and specifically in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about for the startups, for the entrepreneurs, for the creative types in the audience who are building a business, who are really trying to create something that's gonna improve the world to a degree, who really wanna do something full-time that they love, the kind of work that they enjoy doing, and to have this be your career and do this full-time, I'm gonna be talking about how to actually do an angel investment round. So we're talking about that in today's video, and it's coming up right after this. All right, all right. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman, and welcome back to this channel. If it's your first time watching, great. Go and check out some of my other videos that are out there. I put out a lot of content on crowdfunding, and if it's multiple times you've seen some of my videos or you've been watching me for a while, give me a thumbs up so that other people know this video is worth their time. So I'm gonna structure this video a little bit differently because I think we need to first get into a little bit of the context of raising money when it comes to an angel investment round. Why are you doing this? And some metrics that go into this and really being aware of the different stages. And then we're gonna be talking more practically about how to actually go out there to reach out to those angels, where are you gonna find them, how are you gonna actually structure your cadence and your messages and all this kind of stuff, and actually do a successful angel investment round. So let's get into it. So the two major phases which we're gonna be focusing on today, one is going to be the pre-seed stage and the other is going to be the seed stage. So if you have a notebook or something like that, start writing this down, pre-seed and seed stage. So there's two different stages, right? So the pre-seed, typically when we're thinking about pre-seed, that's really for people that have an idea and they're trying to raise money, um, they have an idea and they want to do research on that idea, they really want to validate that idea more, they want to think more through the actual sales channels or think more through the product and the marketing and really think about it from more of a conceptual idea stage, verify, do market validation and market testing. That's what we tend to think about when we think of the pre-seed stage. When we think about the seed stage, that's really when you're kind of, you know, sinking your teeth into actually making this product happen, making the product, fleshing out the marketing, fleshing out the sales. And the goal with the seed stage is to get product market fit, to really get traction, right? So we think of like pre-seed, we think of like bootstrapping, right? Putting together enough money to be able to get it to that stage where we can eventually create the product. In the seed stage, we're thinking more of like really getting that traction, building momentum, and most importantly, getting product market fit. So typically when we're talking about the pre-seed stage, we're talking about entrepreneurs, founders, individuals who are probably working on this company, maybe after work, maybe on the weekends. They're squeezing in the time to be able to actually build and understand this business. And I'm telling you, the number one rule when it comes to building a company is do not run out of money. I'm telling you, you don't want to run out of money. That is like your number one goal. The number one objective is to be able to get the product out there, generate revenue, and to lose as little money as possible. Or I would say just don't run out of money, right? Because then the game is over. If you think about this as kind of like a plane, which is taking off, right? You only have a certain amount of runway, and that runway is directly related to how much cash you got in the bank or the cash that you have access to through different means, right? So your runway, that's really what the time that you have to make this sucker take off in the air, take flight, and you wanna make sure you get off the runway before time runs out. In the pre-seed stage, I would say the majority of students that I'm working with typically are drawing funds from themselves. For, for example, if they have a job and they're earning income at that job, which is paying their bills, they're then putting a certain percentage of savings away to be able to then launch this company in the way you might save for any other kind of major endeavor that you wanna do in life. If you're gonna go attend, for example, a university, you're probably gonna save money for your education, right? If you're gonna go buy a house, you're gonna save money for the down payment. If you're gonna start a business, you need to save money from your main paycheck so that way you can actually have some funds to get that business off the ground in the pre-seed stage. The other way is by using credit cards. So credit cards are actually, I think most entrepreneurs have gone through the process of using credit cards. Not only do you get credit card points, but also if the credit card is in your business name, there's a little bit of separation between you and the business. And in addition, using credit cards is a great option because if you also eventually then have revenue coming in, you can also then pay off those credit cards that way. And it's a very easy form of security securing capital for the business. We will also see people in the pre-seed stage drawing money uh, or getting investors, small investors from friends, family, and second degree connections or professional connections. So that could be someone who's putting in 10K into the company or 5K or really helping with those initial costs that go into really researching and validating the idea and really getting it to the next stage, which is seed stage, which we're gonna be talking about in just a second. I will say that the more you can bootstrap in this phase, the better, right? You don't wanna be just spending money for the sake of spending money. If you can really you know, draw that out and make it so you don't have to spend very much money in this pre-seed stage, that's a great option.
production because then, of course, you can then move into the seed stage and you have less pressure to really get to that next stage very quickly. I do have a lot of uh, students who reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one individual coaching when they are in the idea stage or the pre-seed stage. And usually under that, I'm helping with their business strategy. I'm helping when it comes to raising funding, using crowdfunding. I'm helping them in many different ways to really get their product or their service further down the line with the ways that I know how to when it comes to the techniques and tools that I have access to and really making sure that you are executing on this every step of the way. I would say that from all the other communities out there on YouTube, the one that separates my community from everyone else is that we are action takers. We are willing to take action. We don't just have an idea and have that linger around for years and years and years and don't take any kind of action. We are seeking out information. We are educating ourselves. We're moving the product or the idea forward in some way. We're seeking out mentors, people to help us, service providers, vendors, etc. because we want to make that happen. We're not just talkers. We're not just entrepreneurs. We're actually business owners, creators, inventors, innovators. We're entrepreneurs. We are doing it. So there are a couple of different terms that I want to throw out there and these are actually very important. So I want to make sure I get them correct. Um, the first that you're going to be starting to educate yourself about in the pre-seed and the seed stage would be number one, the valuation of the company and how that changes over the lifetime duration of the company. Number two are the structure uh, of the agreement or the terms eventually that people are going to invest in that company. And there are different ways of raising money. For example, doing a convertible note, for example, doing preferred equity, doing um, like a crowd save, something like that, right? <clears throat> there are different types of agreements which you can have when you are raising money. And when we start to talk about angel investing, that's going to get very important as well as when you're doing VC rounds, et cetera. Um, also the type of company. I have another great video out there on YouTube going through how to actually set up a corporate entity, whether that's an LLC or a C corporation or an S corporation, whatever it is, you can create, use a great tool out there. There are some free ones like Inc file, which I will link up down below as well as the video that kind of goes step by step through how to set up a corporate entity, how to get a registered agent going. If you want to even have an office, for example, a virtual office, a lot of cool stuff that you can do in that phase. In addition, two other quick terms before we get into the brass tacks of raising money from angel investors. And that's the fact that you need to be aware of what your runway is. Okay. So your runway is just how long you can exist as a company before you have to raise money. And typically that runway is going to be defined by the cash in the bank that you got or the, the, the fund that you have access to, for example, your credit card, right? The, the amount of cash that you have access to and your expenses, what you're burning as you're actually operating as a company. So that's why I mentioned really trying to make sure that you don't run out of money. So your runway, the amount of time that you can actually exist as a company is directly related to those numbers. And that impacts the next thing, which is when you have to raise money and the duration of time that it takes to actually raise money. So for example, let's just say that you are a beginning company and you only have six months left uh, in terms of the cash in bank in your bank in order to before you have to actually raise money. That's a very healthy amount. And that's really when you should begin to go out there actively trying to do your seed stage. If you only have like one month before the cash in your bank is going to run out, you got to be hustling, man. You got to be taking a lot of action. And the problem with that is that if you're going to go out of business very quickly, you're going to get worse terms from investors that are out there they see there's just not a lot of cash there, right? And they can obviously have a little bit more flexibility and leeway and leverage when it comes to setting those terms. So if you have more runway, it means you're going to have probably more favorable terms, more time to have a good uh, agreement when it comes to a particular investor and also finding those investors, right? Which I'll talk about next. And in addition, thinking about it, it's just also not going to be as much pressure on you as the entrepreneur. So the other one is duration of raising money. So for a seed stage, um, you know, you could, there's so many different like cases out there of someone raising money in like two weeks, right? But if you really want to think about it from the actual time in which you are actively trying to raise money. So making connections, making content, sending out emails, doing the things we're going to be talking about, right? To actually raising funds, I would say more average or the median would be anywhere from three to six months. I think that's pretty healthy. I think that's definitely um, what the majority of people out there, unless you have like built up existing relationships or you already have existing people which you can easily call on. If you're doing an angel investment round, I'd say budgeting at least three to six months is going to give you enough buffer time to really make sure you're getting the right angels, you're having good terms, and you're giving yourself enough time as well to do and go through the sales investment process, which we'll be talking about. So three to six months, I would say, is a, is a good uh, barometer when it comes to that. Okay, so let's get into the next portion of this video, which is really where are we going to find these angel investors? How do we reach out to them? How do we do an angel round in addition? And uh, how much do you need to raise? All these kinds of questions I'm going to answer next. And to do that, I'm going to go on my whiteboard. All right, man. So let's talk about the angel investment round and really actually how to start finding these people, how to actually go out and do this, how to execute on this. And I'm covering this every step of the way. So if you've been liking this video so far, give me a thumbs up and let me know. So for the angel investment round, first, you want to think about how much money 
do we need in order to create the product, in order to do the marketing, in order to do sales, in order to get some product market fit, in order to also, for example, um, you know, get some traction, to get some revenue, and to begin to really see and validate the fact that there is actually a customer base out there. People are actually buying this product and you can then move into some bigger rounds, for example, a series A round when you're really trying to grow the company. So you wanna think about how much funding you're actually gonna need to be able to get to those particular stages. Now let's just say you have a certain number here, okay? We're just gonna put this number here. You could think, you know, if you're a beginner, you're just kind of getting started, okay, so I'm gonna raise money, I'm gonna find one person who's going to fund this amount. Now, you could maybe find like a super angel, you know, someone who's just gonna be doing like a million dollar angel investment round, like a super angel or something like that. But more often, you're gonna be breaking this up into a bunch of different investors, angel investors, friends, family, um, you know, professional connections, people that are actually going to then uh, invest in this seed funding uh, angel round. So when we talk about angel round, we'll say funding, and I'm gonna just put here seed funding, which I should, probably should have put but before seed funding round, right? So this is gonna be breaking up into, for example, person A, person B, person C. Now, some of these, you might have a couple of different categories here. So this might be friends, family, professional connections, I'm gonna say PC. And the other ones are gonna be sophisticated angel investors or people who qualify as accredited investors. So A, these will be the actual angels or accredited investors. Now, what's the difference here? An angel is someone who specifically is investing in companies, maybe one, two per year, or they're investing in companies even more regularly, but they have the discipline of saying, yes, I am an angel. A credit investor is someone who technically could be an angel from a net worth standpoint and also from a annual income standpoint. So they are a high net worth individual. They're making a significant amount per year. Typically people who are business owners, people who have already had a success in business could be also some high pro profile professions. For example, lawyers, doctors, someone who's working in finance, et cetera, right? So there's angels and there's accredited investors. A credit investor not necessarily is an angel by discipline, but they qualify and they're able to actually put money in when it comes to being an investor. You have friends and family, and then you have professional connections and people who know you throughout your life. So I think that we all understand friends and family and professional connections. I think we can probably figure out, right? The same thing when it comes to uh, accredited investors. Those would be people that you maybe already know or you're networking with in some way and they have either a high net worth or they've been successful in your local community when it comes to being a real estate owner or a business owner of some kind, right? But I think the big one that we wanna talk about on this video are angels. So these are people that you don't know until you begin this process, but they are interested in investing in startup companies like yours. So how do we find these people? That's really the one I wanna get into next when it comes to this video is how do we find angels? How do we find these people who are interested in investing in startup companies. Well, there's a couple of different ways and we're gonna go through them sequentially. So let's start with networks, okay? So networks are uh, basically, you know, different groups of people that are connected in some way and uh, these are basically locations where you can be proactive in finding these particular angel investors. So there are websites out there, for example, and I'll try to include a link down below in the description. I also have a great uh, course out, free course out there when it comes to uh, equity crowdfunding, which I talk a lot about this, but um, some of the networks that are out there, for example, would be AngelList. So there are specific websites where you can actually go out there and you can actually find angel investors through some of the different networks. And I'll try to include a list, like I said, down below uh, if, I, if I get a chance here. So some of the other networks here when it comes to thinking about this would be social media. So for example, LinkedIn groups or LinkedIn itself, social media, Facebook groups that are geared towards angels. So these are would be virtual networks, right? I would say LinkedIn as well when it comes to direct outreach. So these could be angels who are connected in the industry, angels who are in your local network, um, the angels who are in your local area even, right? These are all people who you can begin to reach out to when it comes to different networks, which you're a part of. So the other one would be angel groups specifically, right? Now, these are typically local. So angel groups, I'm referring to different groups in your local area of people who regularly are holding, for example, demo days or pitch events or LinkedIn, you know, kind of meetups or Eventbrite meetups or meetup group meetup. These are actually events that are happening professional meetups for startups, for investors, for pitch days, for demo days, maybe even um, you know examples that might be connected to, for example, like an incubator or an accelerator of some kind, right? So there's angel groups that are out there and typically these are gonna be local. So these are ways that you can actually begin to network with potential angels
angel investors and in that way get you in front of those people that are most likely to put capital in your company at this particular stage when it comes to doing an angel round. Just to you know categorize this here as well, I would put when it comes to these different angel groups, you could also be looking at things like accelerators. So an accelerator, for example, or an incubator, kind of at that seed stage, right? In the pre-seed stage. So for example, like Y Combinator, some of them would be like 500 startups. There's a bunch of different accelerators, incubators that are out there. So an accelerator is typically gonna you know, take some kind of a equity or investment in a particular company. And they're also gonna kind of help when it comes to introductions to mentors, when it comes to maybe an office space, or maybe some guidance or some coaches. Incubators, kind of a little bit different. Some of them might invest, some of them might not. Some of them might be providing more so um, some different resources, which can help them grow your startup. There's some little bit differences there, but I would say definitely look into angel groups is going to be in physically in person one of the easier ways we actually begin to connect with angel investors and then when it comes to uh, sort of virtual ways we're thinking more about angel lists LinkedIn groups Facebook direct outreach and we'll get into that next so these like I said are more so virtual and these ones are going to be more so in person and this is going to be an exercise sales exercise and really an outreach and marketing exercise which we'll be talking about in a little bit but these are when it comes to angel networks okay and then you also have accredited networks okay so so accredited networks could be uh, already connected to you. Like I mentioned, they could be high net worth, right? So this could be business owners. This could be people that are in financial services, people that are lawyers, people that are doctors. And you're probably already a part, you know people potentially who are second degree, first, second degree connections when it comes to this. These people are going to be incredibly valuable. However, they need to be screened. You need to really qualify them and say, are you interested, right? In investing in a new startup company? Would you want to be a part of this? And you have to obviously sell the vision as well and get them excited about it and talk as well about, you know, the actual business plan and the financials and the metrics and the operations. But these people, while they might not identify as being an angel, someone who regularly invests in startups, they could, however, by de facto, make up your angel funding round when it comes to your seed funding round. So the last point I wanna make on this before we get into the next section here, and hopefully you guys can, you can read my writing. If you can, give me a thumbs up right at this point in this video, is that typically when you are meeting someone who is an angel, who is a part of this crowd, guess what? They also usually have friends, right? They're probably friends with other people. So just as well, just because they're not maybe interested right now in investing in your company or being an angel investor or you know investing in a new startup company in general, they might know other people who would be interested, who you should be talking to. So don't ever like burn the bridges, right? Really have an open mind. Be willing to really understand the network in your local community and begin to navigate it, begin to plot it out, begin to understand it using some of the te techniques we'll be talking about next. We went over how to find some of these angels and now we're talking about really how to reach out to them. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. All right, so I know this is a lot of information that I am throwing your way, but I really do wanna get into how do we actually contact those angels. And if you want more help, you can always book an individual one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. We can do an intensive call when it comes to your business, how to grow it, how to actually as well do incorporate other ways of raising money. For example, using crowdfunding, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, and how to actually blow this sucker up. How do you not only get the funding you need, but also learn the entire skills, so that way as a founder, as an entrepreneur, you never have to worry about the bank being at zero dollars. You can always raise more money. And that's really the skill of an entrepreneur, being able to do sales, being able to lead, being able to raise money. If you don't have those skills, book an individual coaching call with me down below and we can talk a lot more about that and also put up a plan for you when it comes to your learning and education in this particular area as a founder. So when we are contacting angels, okay, we always have to keep something in mind, which is the amount of funding that we are going after. I was so bad at math when I was younger. I hated math, I hated puzzles, but as I got it older, I realized that I like math, but only if it has dollar signs in front of it, right? That's really when it's cool because if you're actually raising funds, you can then deploy that to create products and services and marketing and advertising and hire staff. You can change people's lives, right? When you actually have access to funding and money. And it's one of the coolest pieces about this. So I think that an easy way to make this more manageable is to break this down of how many angels do you need or how many investors do you need? And at what amount? Is this a $10,000 check, right? Is this a $5,000 check? Is this people that are putting in smaller amounts? Can you get someone to write you even a larger amount? Like for example, a $25,000 check or a $50,000 check? Um, the very first startup that I ever worked at, I interned at, and I've actually never you know, worked for a corporate job or anything like that. I've, I've only had really internships before I started my company in 2012, crowdcrux.com. I started my company and it's grown a ton right since then. So I, you know, when I actually was working with a guy, he was able to raise $50,000 from a local angel investor who was 
was a successful business owner in the area. And this was for a small company that eventually went out of business called Loyal Curve. So you can raise you know, 10, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, $50,000, right? Or more when it comes to angels. So you wanna think about how much funding do you really need and be honest about this. How much funding do you really need to build out the product, to build out the marketing? Maybe a couple of those initial hires even when it comes to helping you, your staff or freelancers or however you wanna structure it, really getting you know progress with particular business in this stage when it comes to seed funding. So thinking about that, and like I said, breaking this down into a number, how many people do you need? It's gonna make it a lot easier. So I would liken this process of contacting angel investors to sales and marketing. If you're not familiar with sales and marketing, you're gonna get very familiar, right, as a business owner, or if you're gonna hire a digital marketing agency like mine or something like that to help you one day, you are gonna get very familiar with this. So if you wanna kinda of have a crash course, this is going to be a funnel. So you're gonna have some people that are at the outer edges of the funnel and are gonna slowly go in and in, and more and more, you're gonna to get to the actual number that you need when it comes to the people that are investing in your company. So the most important things is that there are people that are deals, that are in the deal stage, and then you have leads. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put this under here, but think about this almost as like, the leads are kind of here, right? If we think about this, this is where all the leads are, and then some of them are gonna kind of trickle in and become deals, okay? So leads, the most important thing when it comes to leads are contact information, phone number, email, name, profession, understanding a lot about them. Uh, the other thing would be, so so info, right, we're gonna say info, and then also are they qualified? So what does qualified mean? Well, you could go out there and you could talk about your business or your startup company, and you could talk with a bunch of people who are super excited as you, but what if they can't invest money, right? Then you're just wasting your time. You're, you're presenting to the wrong people, right? So you need to be very aware of who your target audience is. So you should write out who are the people People that you're really going after. How are they qualified? Are we going after friends and family? People to put just, for example, 5K into this business? How can we help them wrap their mind around that kind of investment at this particular stage in the company? What is the company valued at? What are the actions that you're taking, right? And we're talking more about how to structure that particular process. Um, so the leads, so you're gonna be going out there and you're gonna be, first of all, you're gonna be generating leads, okay? And we're gonna break that process down a little bit. And then a certain number of these leads, which are here, are gonna be turning into deals. So these are people who do express interest, they're qualified, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna do a presentation. You have that person's permission to kind of move that down the cycle. And this deal stage, again, if we think about leads to deals to then actually raising money, typically for the angel investment stage when it comes to seed stage, is gonna be three to six, months. So use this lens when you're putting this together of how long this is going to take, of the check size, the number of angels you need. This is all about math, okay? And I obviously I hate math, right? But when we think about numbers, we think about money, we think about funding, it becomes extremely powerful. It's all a numbers game. So let's separate this when it comes to contacting angels, as we mentioned, into leads and deals. So deals are really just uh, getting someone to invest in the company when they've expressed interest, when they're qualified, and they're moving more so into the deal stage when you're actually raising money and you are contacting angels. So let's first talk about the channel. So what are some of the channels that you're going to be using when it comes to contacting these leads? Typically, it's gonna be in person. So you're getting that contact information maybe in person. Uh, then you'd be sending up emails. Also, what other ones would be LinkedIn. If someone is expecting a phone call of yours or they're a first degree or a second degree connection and you're calling them right with that specific purpose, maybe set up that phone call with a little bit of context when it comes to sending an email, you then might be following up more so into the, the phone call stage in order to qualify that person. So first of all, you're gonna have your channels. Next, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need to have a script. The script is typically gonna be short. It's gonna be value packed, so bullet points probably. And you're gonna be talking about some of the unique things when it comes to the actual product, when it comes to the company, when it comes to the market size, when it comes to the solution which you developed, the team most importantly. I will share a little bit of a secret with you is that when it comes to early stage companies, the thing that matters most when it comes to whether that company is successful or not typically is the team. And here's a great example of that. There are so many people who've tried to start social media companies, who've tried to start online marketplaces, but there's only one Amazon, right? There's only one Facebook. There's only one YouTube. The team is really what makes the difference in the long run because as well when it comes to pre-seed, seed stage, series A, throughout these different stages, typically the company is also iterating a lot. So maybe they're changing their focus. Maybe they're changing some of the features of the product. Instagram did 
didn't start out as Instagram. Groupon didn't start out as Groupon. It evolved over time into what it became today. Same with Twitter, right? It was spun off from an existing company, I believe. So you have a script, which is short bullet points, and some of those major things would be the team, the product slash solve uh, the problem, the market or the industry or the, the size. And the last one I would say is traction. So traction, I will also add to that is social proof or credibility. So for social proof is just a marketing term. I'm a digital marketer myself. I have a small digital marketing agency where we help people when it comes to launching crowdfunding campaigns, raising capital for their startups, uh, getting the word out there. We also work with established companies as well. This is really uh, just a marketing term, which is social proof, which is just credibility. So for example, if you have an illustrious career as an engineer, having built many different products from many other countries or companies, or are you from a really Ivy League college, or do you have someone on your team who has noteworthy accomplishments, or if the sales is the most important skill, do you have a salesperson who is a closer at your company? What, where's the social proof? Where's the credibility? The more you can bake that in when it comes to your script, the better. So leads, it's really just about a numbers game, going through these channels, going through and meeting people, going through and getting referrals, right? The other one I'll add here is referrals. So just because you know someone and you contact them, maybe they're not interested, you can get a referral or people that you already know can refer you to someone who is a qualified lead, which can then move them into the deal stage. So that you're focusing intensely on this. You're doing a lot of outreach, right? Um, you're doing a ton of activity and you're, you're setting a KPI, which is also known as a key performance indicator. Salespeople like myself, we're very motivated when it comes to targets. So you want to think about what, how many people am I trying to reach out to every single week? What am I going to do in terms of that target to make sure I hit this? So you're going to be very aggressively going through this process of getting lots and lots of these leads that are qualified and, you know, eventually moving them into this deal stage, as you can see here. So you're going to be focusing so much on all these leads. You need to fill up your pipeline when it comes to deals, but then slowly as well, adding to this until you hit your number of angels that you need in order to hit your funding amount. Next, let's talk about deals. So the most important thing when it comes to a deal is this is someone who is interested and who is qualified. Okay. They're then moving into the deal stage. So when it comes to the channels with the deals, you're probably communicating just through a couple of different channels. That's probably going to be email. That could be meetings, like in-person meetings. I do recommend getting face-to-face -face if you can, or Zoom. I really do find that kind of having that person to person, being able to see someone is incredibly important in the sales and in the investing process. If, if very, you know, at the very lowest, I would say making sure you do something like Loom videos to go through your pitch deck, et cetera, and really kind of light this up and make someone really see the value of investing in your company. So channels, if you're more sophisticated, a lot of my coaching students are like, okay, Sal, like I understand like you're talking to beginners, but I really want to soup this up. Like I really want to supercharge my funding, right? For those people that are more advanced, hundred percent, I recommend as well thinking about a CRM tool. So along with the scripts, which is something that I'll, I'll get into a little bit later, you also need some kind of a tracking mechanism. So we're going to be tracking the deal flow as someone is going through this particular deal stage. So again, it's like a funnel, right? If you want to imagine it, it's kind of like a funnel that's going, you know, from, from the larger to the smaller. So we want to track people through that particular stage and identifying where are they? Have you done a demo yet or not? Have you contacted them or not? We really want to identify what are the different stages when it comes to the funnel and using tracking. So this is when I recommend using more of a, a tool. So for example, I love using a pipe drive. There's some other tools out there. At the very least, you should be using something like Google Sheets. You gotta track this guys in some way. And I would even recommend incorporating Google Sheets as well into the leads which you're generating, right? So if you're get contacting a lot of people, you're getting a lot of information, I would recommend as well involving Google Sheets in this particular phase. So you're tracking this in some way and people are starting to move through the cycle and you're also gonna get some percentages. That's what's really cool about using software is you're gonna see, okay, so if I contact this number of leads, this generates this many deals and this number of people move from doing a demo to then expressing interest or starting to begin to negotiate when it comes to this particular funding route. So there's tracking mechanisms, there's channels, and then there's the scripting, also known as the demo. So this is gonna be uh, both in writing. So for example, slide deck or pitch, you know, your business plan, obviously, you know, the, the script of what you're gonna say, how do you actually do the pitch? And then finally, there's gonna be probably a presentation of whether that's a video recording or whether that's you doing this in person, right? There's be, gonna be some kind of a verbal pitch where you're talking to the camera, you're talking to that individual and you're going through questions and answers. So probably there's gonna be, I recommend uh, writing up when it comes to the script as well, some FAQs that you're probably gonna get. So they might ask you about 
traction or credibility, or they might actually about problems, solution. You have to got know those numbers, right? Uh, off the top of your head when it comes to as much as possible, because it just makes it seem like you are serious about this. Or they might ask you questions like, hey man, how much have you invested in this company, right? If you're expecting me to invest. So there's gonna be the channels, the tracking, the script, and this is gonna be a, a process where you are continually refining this. You're continually getting better and better and better. So we went over how to find angels. We went over as well how to actually do the round, how to contact people and how to do it in a much more scientific sort of strategic way. The final thing, I wanna give you guys a bonus tip. And this is because this is my experience and you're getting tons of free value right now. So if you are enjoying this, please give me a thumbs up and let me know by leaving a comment on this video. So what we went through already, right, was really, first of all, starting with leads, getting tons and tons of people, getting their contact information, going through the process of qualifying them, right? Then a certain number of those leads are going to be qualified. So we're just gonna kind of have this be a smaller circle here. So these are ones that are qualified, right? And they're at the top of the funnel and they're kind of moving down the funnel, right? And then a certain number of them are gonna become angel investors in your company. And again, we talked as well about this duration. If you really want a way to kind of supercharge this process, a way to leverage more of your time, to be more effective, to raise even more funding, what a lot of people have been doing to make this process even easier, they've been adding an element to this process and that element is crowdfunding. So if you're already doing all of this work, why shouldn't you just involve the entire crowd in this? If you're already going out there, you're talking to people, you're marketing, you're presenting, why not do it to a bunch of people at once? It's like in the same way that I do these individual coaching calls, right? When it comes to business, when it comes to strategy, when it comes to startup funding, when it comes to crowdfunding, right? And people can book those individual coaching calls with me and I'll include a link down below as well. If you wanna book an intensive coaching call with me, I also do group coaching programs. And we do this on a semester basis. And this is the same way if you wanna think about it. You could reach out individually to people or you could have a ton of people viewing your pitch at the exact same time and kind of kill more birds with one stone, right? This is a whole other way in which you can supercharge the raising of money for your startup company with an angel investment round in the pre-seed stage, in the seed stage, and it can allow you to have a lot more traction as well because you can market this publicly. You can put this on a crowdfunding platform like Seed Invest, WeFunder, Start Engine. Um, there are so many great ones that are out there, right? And you can actually raise money directly from the crowd. And you can get people that have never heard of you before, everyday retail investors, everyday ordinary Americans who are not accredited investors, actually watch your pitch video, check out your campaign page, decide to invest right then and there $1,000 into your company. And all of a sudden then that's added to the pot with all the other work that you've been doing. So it can be great if you're trying to not only raise investment capital, introduce new investors, make some media headlines. And lastly, I think this is actually one of the coolest parts of crowdfunding. You can also give away your product or a license of your product if you have a software campaign for people that invest a certain amount. So for example, let's just say with crowdfunding, you have someone come in here and they just, there's these different reward packages. So if they decide to invest, we'll just say $1,000, maybe they get access to your tool or they get access to your product. You ship it to them, right? If it's a physical product. Maybe if they invest $5,000, they then they get access to a really cool founder dinner. Please don't obliterate me here in the comments when it comes to my drawing. Or if they invest 10,000, you can you can think of more interesting rewards, right? So you can also have different packages on the page where depending on how much they invest, you can involve them more in your vision. You can involve them more in your experience. We have a really interesting car company or startup. They can also in some way participate as a customer and then they become an evangelist for you and your brand. Um, and I think that's actually gonna be a model that a lot more local businesses are also gonna move towards when it comes to raising money. For example, if you could visit a local business that you also invested in. I'm here in Miami and one of the companies paddle, which allows you to rent a paddle board at a park. They are, they have done a, an equity crowdfunding campaign uh, using crowdfunding and you can actually then also meet, right? And be able to go out and use the product. And you're also an investor in that company, which is a really cool way to participate in your local community. So if you're interested in learning more about using equity crowdfunding to raise money when it comes to your startup company, go and check out the free course I have down below sharing with you step-by-step -step how do you actually do an equity crowdfunding campaign what are some of the marketing tricks that go into this? What are some of the resources and tools that no one talks about that you can actually use that are either inexpensive or free in order to really kind of light a fire underneath this particular campaign? And also, I have a great book out there, Equity Crowdfunding Explained, available on Audible, also via paperback, which you can check out down below. But I hope that you found this video to be useful when it comes to raising money for angel investors, doing an angel funding round. At the very least, you feel a little bit more educated. You feel a little bit more like you have more know-how, more confidence going into 
change the process because if you are confident, you can do anything, my friends. You can figure out a way and you can have that hustle, that tenacity, that hunger, that fire to be able to iterate, be able to improve as you go, to learn the things that you need to in order to get your startup to that next stage. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Salvador Brigman. Go and check out some of my other videos out there. I also have a podcast as well. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you next time.